Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. It's ever so slightly less packed than last week, but we did still get some cool announcements on the Gunpla front. Just ignore the fact that they're premium Bandai. First up, yesterday pre-orders went live for the high-grade Gundam Hajiroboshi second form. And at 2860 yen, which is 21 US, it is quite the expensive thing for an Iron-Blooded Orphan's high grade. It does come with a very interesting back skirt, because those things are connected not to the back, but to the back skirt. And it's also got some cool weapons. Um, there's two wire anchors that can be shot out, in, um, which include the wire. Um, the crab shield has been replaced by the smart claw shield, and its main weapon is the cross mace. The unholy love child of a two-hander and a mace. Uh, so whether or not this remold is worth it is going to be up to you. Um, the second remold then is from the Gundam Factory Yokohama. The 1144th scaled RX-78 F00 HMT Gundam High Mobility Type G3 image color. Uh, you can get this bad boy on July the 15th for 2,530 n, 18 US, and as far as I can tell, the only difference with the previously released high mobility type is the color scheme. Instead of the black prototype Gundam scheme, it now has the grey and purple G3 color scheme. And also the high mobility parts have a slightly more subdued color. Um, and for the occasion, the original one has also gone up for sale again. Of course, over at the Gundam Factory Yokohama. For the Master Grades then, we go back to the regular Premium Bandai's, but don't get your hopes up, it is just a mission pack for the Gundam F90. Well, two new mission packs. For 2420N, 17 US, there is the J-Type and the Q-Type offering a very interesting contrast. The J stands for a jacket and is basically the F-90 full armor Gundam. Almost its entire body is covered up with extra armor, like a jacket, and now comes armed with a beam cannon on the backpack, um, a double beam cannon on the right arm, and two beam sabers inside of the buckler shield on the left arm. The Q then stands for quick. So instead of extra armor, this thing gets a bunch of extra thrusters and just uses the standard F90 weaponry. And talking about limited edition stuff, Osaka will get a pop-up Gundam base from July the 21st to August 13th, where they will of course be selling a lot of limited edition Gundam base and Gundam Side F Gunpla. Finally for the Gunpla news then, it was announced that the 2023 Gunpla Ichiban Kuji will start on the 22nd of September. And as previously announced, the main prizes are a solid clear Master Grade Freedom version 2.0, Master Grade Ill Strike Gundam version remastered, High Grade Gundam Aerial, and High Grade Gundam Love Rith. And on the figure front then, things are also looking very premium Bandai limited, with reservations starting for the Metal Robot Spirit, Strike Freedom Gundam and Infinite Justice Gundam 20th Anniversary version. Both go for 17,610 a pop, 126 US, and for that price you are of course getting a very shiny and hefty version of the two main Gundam Seed Destiny machines. Do keep in mind though that these are just recolors of previously released Metal Robot Spirits figures. And at first glance you might not even notice the differences with the old ones. The 20th anniversary versions do have new and more golden markings and the paint has a more glossy finish. So really the biggest difference seems to be the new base that they're on. So let us Sundays then might be over, but Witch from Mercury is still alive and well. From August the 4th until the 27th, they've got a campaign in bookstores across Japan where they will be giving out one Witch from Mercury bookmark with every book you buy. 
and there are some really cute designs included. So the full list of participating stores is linked down below in case you really want some of these. And the Witch from Mercury Festival then has revealed some more official goods that they're selling with some amazing summary designs and also the item that every Witch from Mercury fan must have. A Gwell stainless steel mug. The website is linked down below and does offer international shipping. Gundam Seed Freedom meanwhile has early tickets up for pre-order that come with an A5 clear file and there's also these five connectable movie cards that go for, well, that are resold on the 16th and go for a whopping 9,500 yen, uh, which is 68 US. I'm not exactly sure what these cards are, but I can tell you that they are really expensive cards. On the gaming front then, in Gundam Battle Operation 2 for PlayStation, the Gira Doga Kai with its funky flat head joins the fun, or as they're calling it, the Buckethead Gira Doga, and they're having an early celebration of the game's fifth anniversary by doing six things. One, there's a daily free special supply drop, two, a limited supply drop, three, the new Gundam and Sazabi are added to the recycle counter, and six, the new Gundam and Sazabi are added to the base camp as statues. Four and five, we don't talk about apparently, just like we don't talk about the Steam version. For Extreme Versus then, for folks in America, a cross-boost tournament will be held at EVO 2023, and the arcade machines should also be open for free play during the event. And for the folks in Japan, from tomorrow until August the 6th, there is the crossover campaign between Gundam Overboost and Gundam Arsenal Base Link Stage. All the details are linked down below in Japanese, but in short, um, by playing with your Bamco Passport, you will get one point for every play, which can then be exchanged for various prizes. One random card for 10 points, a poster for 20 points, a towel for 80 points, and a t-shirt for 100 points. And Super Robot Wars will be getting a news live stream on the 16th. It'll include news on Super Robot Wars Double D and new Super Robot Wars toys. So expect some cool announcements from that. And of course, I will have that linked down below. And in other news, a new Bandai Gachapon store is opening up in Tsutaya in the across plaza Tomizawa Nishi. From September 9th until November the 20th, a giant robot exhibition will be held at the Fukuoka Art Museum. From July the 28th until... I guess when stock runs out, a Gundam manhole cart will be given out to visitors of the Matsue Horikawa Craft Beer Museum. The featured Gundam Girl of the Week is the RX-72 Girl with magnetic coating, giving her unlimited reaction speed in theory. The Gundam Factory Yokohama then has released a limited edition ticket that includes access to the Gundam Factory Yokohama, of course, um, and also a 1000 yen meal voucher for the Gundam Cafe there and a Minato Burari ticket, which gives you unlimited use of um, the public transport in Yokohama and certain perks in participating stores. So for 2,500 yen, which is around 18 US, that is actually a really good deal. A standard entry ticket to the Gundam Factory Yokohama by itself is already 1,650 yen, then you have the 1,000 yen meal ticket, which already then saves you a dollar. And then you've got unlimited transport and whatever those perks are on top of that. These tickets are sold in the Yokohama subway and train station and are theoretically sold until September the 30th, um, but will actually last until they're sold out. So I am expecting them to sell out earlier. Um, so for more information, I will have the link down below. And continuing with their efforts to fix social issues with Gundam, the Gundam Pavilion that will be appearing at the 2025 Japan World Expo has entered in a partnership with the Osaka Healthcare Pavilion. Um, and to be honest, they can really do with a better mascot. I don't know what this mutated flower is supposed to represent, but... 
health or healthcare isn't the first thing that comes to mind. Um, also, they created a Gundam in the colors of the Osaka Healthcare Pavilion's logo, so I wonder if this thing is going to be turned into an actually commercially available Gunpla. As for the things that you could get this week then, um, starting Sunday for 500 yen a spin for US, you can get a mini card ass machine that can actually dispense the included card ass cards by cranking the handle. There's eight different sets and each set comes with six card ass cards, five normals and one holographic. From Monday onwards then you can try your luck to win a Mirine Elan or Guel plushie from the second volume of Witch from Mercury Tomonui prize figures. And then finally today we are getting two fully featured Gumpla, both going for 2200 yen each um, around 17 US. Uh, there is the high-grade Gundam Calibarn, um, which comes with its variable rod rifle, the escutcheon, an action base, and in molded parts for both the antenna and the shell unit for the gunned arm system on the chest. Meaning that it comes with basically everything you could expect from a high grade. And then there is the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Unicorn Gundam Unit 2 Banshee Destroy Mode and Banshee Norn Part Set. And as the name indicates, you can build this thing as either the standard Banshee or the Norn or something in between, um, and as part of the cross silhouette line, you can choose between the more cutesy standard SD frame, which you can then combine with the like actual eye stickers, or the more lean cross silhouette frame, which you can then combine with the more traditional Gundam eye stickers for a cool look. And then finally, five Muchiri Squeeze Horos will be available from Japanese Namco Arcade starting tomorrow. The balls are soft and squishy and are available in five colors. Green, pink, blue, orange and yellow. For this week's Gundam reading material then, there was the August issue of Animedia, featuring a special covering the end of the series, and has Guel, Saleta, Mirine, and a bunch of tomatoes on the cover. There was the August issue of Animage, featuring Saleta and Mirine on the cover, as well as a bunch of interviews with the cast. And then we can find even more interviews in the August issue of New Type, which also features Soleta and Mirine on the cover, as well as everyone's favorite, Caliborn. And the final interview, this time with Yohei Azakami, Guel's voice actor, is in the August issue of Pash. Next up, we've got the Sharks Counterattack and Hathaway's Flash edition of Gundam Archives, and it was also announced that on July the 31st, a Koichi Tokita art book will be releasing. In the Gundam sphere, he is of course mainly known for Gundam Astray, Gundam Exa, G-Unit and so on, but what I wasn't expecting was Wander Momo. A pretty fun game for the PC Engine, which apparently a few years ago got turned into a not quite so excellent anime. Um, moving on to this week's Gundam Apparel then, where Strig G is trying to get this video demonetized apparently. So let's just say that they are releasing sunglasses styled after Quattro Bugina sunglasses, but written with a V, <laughs> um, which are made in collaboration with Swans. Um, they come with either a golden or silver finish, and as cherry on top, they actually have Bajina, with a V, printed on both the glasses themselves and on um, the case that comes with them. Um, so yeah, if you get them, I'm sure they'll be the perfect conversation starter. Um, they were released on July the 7th and can be yours for 17,050 yen each, which is um, 120, 123 US. The link to Strict G is down below, as well as a guide on how to buy from them. And Bonkore, which was less controversial, let's say, and on the same day we got a bunch of Witch from Mercury items. 
a gunned arm ink necktie for 4,950 yen, 36 US, and a fancy gunned arm ink belt for 13,035 yen, 94 US, both of which are slated for an October release. And then a bunch of t shirts. For 5,280 yen, 38 US, you can get a short sleeved pocket t shirt with Soletis emblem or Murines emblem. And for 4,730 yen, 34 US, you can get a regular t shirt with a famous scene on the back and a matching personal emblem on the front. There's Soleta, Mirine, Soleta and Mirine, Soleta and Guel, Soleta and Elan, Mirine and Shadik, and Nika and Choo Choo. The pocket t-shirts are slated for a July release and the regular shirts for an August release. And there's even more t-shirts releasing in August because today these Yajima model shop t-shirts from the mass production type Rico drama series went up for pre-order. They're available in black, white, grey, green and yellow and go for 4,400 yen each around uh, 32 US. And pay close attention to the slogan on the sleeve and the bottom of the runner. Give birth is one hell of a slogan. I guess Gundam really is committed to solving Japan's social issues. And then finally we get a quote acrylic stand for Romba Roll. And no, it is unfortunately not the quote you're thinking about. Uh, for 1,782 yen, around 13 US, you can get Rombarol saying that he forgot to fight in the middle of a fight. And as always, let's quickly wrap things up with the polls. Um, with the Gundam Seed Destiny HD Remastered Complete Blu-ray box being released on the 28th, Gundam.info wants to know what our favorite Zaku is. Of course, from Gundam Seed Destiny. The Zaku Warrior, the Gunner Zaku Warrior, the Blaze Zaku Phantom, or the Slash Zaku Phantom. And what's really interesting to see here is that the Twitter and the main website version of the poll don't agree on anything. The standard Zaku Warrior is dead last on Twitter, but it's actually in the lead on Gundam.info, which I'm guessing is thanks to the fact that Atheron did pilot a standard one in uh, the beginning and a Blaze Zaku Warrior uh, during the Break the World incident. The Gunner Zaku Warrior then um, stood out the least, being in second to last place on Twitter and last place on Gunnam.info. Maybe the poor thing would have gotten a few more votes had they shown um, Luna Maria's Gunner Zaku Warrior instead of the standard version. But next up, the thing that surprised me the most in a bad way was the Blaze Zaku Phantom. I first saw this poll on Gundam.info where the poor thing was barely ahead of the Gunner Zaku Warrior. But fortunately on Twitter, it is doing better where it is in a comfortable second place. It's definitely my favorite one of the bunch, although I would go with Highness Unit instead. And finally, the Slash Zaku Phantom from the ever popular Izak. It is only in second place on Gundam.info, but somehow managed to get 40% of all votes on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, this is really crazy so far, this can really go anyway, so if you want to cast your vote, I'll have the links down below. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news.